welcome back to the Energize Power Tutorial Series. Today I will show you all about machines and energy. In Energize Power there are two types of machines. Energy producers, like the coal engine or the solar panel. And there are energy consumers, like the sawmill or the power furnace. Most machines are crafted with machine frames. Machines have different tiers. There are basic, ardent, advanced and reinforced advanced machines. Every machine has an internal energy buffer. If you hover above the energy meter, some stats will be shown. In the first line, you can see how much energy is currently stored in the internal energy buffer and how much energy it can hold. For a consumer machine, the second line shows how much energy is required to finish the recipe. In the third line, we see how much energy is consumed per tick. For a producer machine, the second line will show how much energy will be produced until the recipe is finished. In the third line, you will see how much energy is produced per tick. If a machine does not get enough energy per tick, it will slow down, as you can see here. Energize Power uses the standard energy RP of the mode loader. On Forge and Neoforge it uses Forge Energy FE, also known as Redstone Flux RF, and on Fabric it uses Energy E. This makes it compatible with generators, machines and cables from other mods. The coal engine is the most basic generator in Energize Power. It converts fuel into energy. A coal engine can be crafted with a basic machine frame, a furnace and some other resources. The energy production per tick of the coal engine depends on the fuel used. The coal engine supports all fuels which can be used in a furnace. Here are some examples. Sticks produce 1 Fe per tick, planks produce 3 Fe per tick, coal produces 16 Fe per tick, a block of coal produces 160 Fe per tick. This is 10 times more energy per tick than coal, but this is crafted with 9 pieces of coal only. Lava produces 200 Fe per tick. This is the maximum energy production of the coal engine. The burn duration of an item is 5 seconds, unless the fuel would produce more than 200 Fe per tick. In this case, the fuel will will burn longer than 5 seconds. Like all energy power machines, the coal engine supports automatic insertion and extraction of items. Fuel can be inserted with a hopper or any other means of item transportation from every block phase and leftover items like empty buckets can be extracted. The powered furnace melts items using electricity. All normal furnace recipes are supported. It can be crafted with a basic machine frame, two furnaces and some other resources. The powered furnace consumes two Fe per tick. In Energize Power there are often multiple ways of doing or crafting things, but better machines will produce more output and or use less resources. For example, the powered furnace is twice as fast as the normal furnace, but smells the same amount of items, even the same amount of fuel. In Energize Power there are sometimes trade-offs. The powered furnace is faster than the normal furnace but does not give any XP. Some machines are automatic but use up some tools. The sawmill gets more out of your wood. It can also be used to recycle blocks made out of wood. The sawmill can be crafted with a basic machine frame, a saw blade and some other resources. The sawmill will also produce sawdust. Sawdust can be crafted into a block of sawdust and the block of sawdust can be smelted to get charcoal. In energy power, energy producers and consumers can directly be connected without cables, but this approach is not very scalable. Cables can be used to connect multiple energy producers to multiple energy consumers. For cables, cable insulators are required. Those can be crafted with a wool, regardless of color, and shears by right-clicking the wool block. 
In einer Just Power there are multiple cable tiers. The most basic cable is the TIN cable. This can transfer up to 128 FE per tick. For those cables we need TIN. TIN can be found between Y level 25 and 80 and it can be mined with stone tools or better. You can smelt the raw tin to make some tin ingots. There are multiple options for crafting tin cables. You could either use 6 cable insulators and 3 tin ingots or 6 cable insulators and 3 tin wires. The latter option uses less resources but requires additional processing steps. To make tin wires, tin plates are required. Those can be crafted with a hammer. To turn the plates into wires, we need the cutter. The cutter can be crafted with iron and sticks. Now we can craft the tin wire. And with those we can now craft the tin cable. With those cables we can connect energy producers to energy consumers. If you connect multiple consumers to a single cable network, the energy production is split evenly between all machines. You can also connect multiple energy producers to multiple energy consumers. Mining cables by hand would take a lot of time. To save some time you can break cables with the cutter. You can light up your factory with the powered lamp. It can be crafted with a redstone lamp, silicon and copper. It uses just one FE per tick. Today you have learned the basics of machines and energy. In the next episode I will show you solar panels and more basic machines. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing and hitting the bell for more awesome videos like this one. I will see you next time.